it's Mike with Utastic. I'm here at GoToConf 2014. I'm standing with Max DeMarzi, who's going to be presenting on graph databases. And, uh, well, with graph databases with Neo4j, but he also runs the uh, Neo4j, or I should say the Windy City GraphDB database, uh, database user group. That's a mouthful. Windy City GraphDB uh, meetup here in Chicago. Uh, Max, uh, thanks for taking the time to speak with me. Uh, so your presentation, uh, what is the title of the presentation, and what is kind of the gist of what you're going to be talking about? Sure. So the presentation is basically just an uh, introduction to graph databases. And the idea of the presentation is to take you through a bunch of different use cases or things you can do with the graph. Um, whether you're building a new social network, whether you're looking at permission management or uh, network ontology, um, you know, there's many different places where graphs fit. Uh, when one of the models of Neo4j is that graphs are everywhere. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to show that and say, look, they really are everywhere. Um, so, I mean, for people who might be familiar with a relational database, what's the difference between something like Neo4j and, and, and RDBMS? The difference is how we handle relationships. In a relational database, you're always joining. Every time you make a query, you're, you're asking, um, find a way to connect these two things together. In the graph, we don't do that. Instead, we connect when you create things. Okay. So the relationships get created ahead of time, and what that gives you is the ability to say, um, how is it connected by a pointer that I can right. traverse directly? I don't have to um, worry about how big my t my join tables get or anything mm -hmm. like that. Everything is an O1 um, uh, cost to you when you're trying to join two things together. Mm -hmm. And that helps you scale when you have highly connected uh, components in your data model. Okay, and so it's, it's, it's not quite analogous to um, a foreign key uh, relationship described in, in, a, in a RDBMS. It's it's something like a relationship is its own entity. Yeah, and, and to be honest, it is kind of a foreign key. It's really, the foreign key is in memory, and it's mm -hmm. a pointer. So it's not a, a different table you have to go and scan and find. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's just right there waiting for you. Uh, and that's what really makes it fast. It's, you know, computer science, there's no magic. It's always data structures and algorithms. So we have a data structure that's optimized for connecting things together. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the difference between us and relational database. Okay. And Neo4j, that's not like a closed source. That's not like Oracle or something like that. That's... That's another interesting aspect of, of this presentation is that Neo4j is an open source. Yeah, absolutely. It's, a, it's an open source library. It's been around for about 10 years. Um, and if you want to use the community edition, you're welcome to use it anywhere you use MySQL. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of examples also on, on my blog at maximars.com where I show you everything I do and have all the source code available on GitHub. So mm -hmm. you're free to download and play with it and, and build your own stuff with it. Um, you know, it's one of the nice things about working in a... In a open source companies that everything you do gets to be open source, right, so I don't right. have to worry about it. You know, there's a few uh, bits and pieces that are client code that are, that are closed source, but in the end, I, I re turn those around and make blog posts out of them anyway. So. Right. So uh, there's always that, that sharing. And, and just in the spirit of sharing, going to the user group itself, uh, the Windy City GraphDB user group, which probably reads a lot easier than it, than it rolls off the tongue. Uh, <laughs> but you, are you the founder of the group, or are you an organizer over there? Sure. I started the group about two years ago because um, I fell in love with Neo4j, the product. Yeah. Um, and I was a community user for about four years. Uh, I only joined the company about a year and a half ago, and I just love the product. I fell in love with it. Like I said, it's, uh, it's addictive to, to be able to do things in graph. I was mm -hmm. a SQL developer for years, and that's a lot worse. Um, but usually I, I wrap a blog post or two, and then I will present the blog post and explain you know, how it was done, get more details, answer people's questions. And then uh, if people have their own ideas of what they want to do with the graph, I'll mm -hmm. show how they could do it. Or you know, It's really uh, about the, the audience, whatever they want, whatever they need. They have access to ask questions and, and, and learn something from it. Yeah. And uh, so the format, you, know, you, you said you started the group because uh, you were already passionate about Neo4j. And then you've been writing blog posts and like you kind of like come up with an idea for a presentation and you write it up and then do the talk at the user group? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the ideas come from um, customer work we do mm -hmm. and also from just random people emailing me, hey, how would I do this in the graph? Right. Um, and sometimes it's easier to just build it than to tell them how they would do it. Right. Uh, you know, nothing speaks louder than code. So I'll be able to show them, here's the code. Yeah. Uh, someone knows how to connect to Facebook. Well, here's a go to do it. Not just theoretically how you would do it. Yeah. And do you ever have anybody come in from outside and do presentations, or is it mostly just you're you're fielding these 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 requests or these questions? We have a few um, customers in the area, and sometimes they'll come in and talk and show you uh, what they've done. Um, okay. Um, but a lot of times it's hard because Neo for j stuff seems to be secret sauce for a lot of people, so they, yeah. they can't really show us proprietary stuff they're doing. Um, but you know. 
a lot of times it's really just me. I wish I had more <laughs> uh, helping me out. I wish uh, there were more open source projects out yeah. there uh, in Chicago doing it so that they could help me out. Um, but there's always something um, to be said. And I yeah. can talk about graphs forever. So. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we talked a little bit before the conversation, this conversation, about uh, uh, there was a, a little example of a uh, meetup, meetups uh, app that was looking at some of the uh, uh, analytics and statistics around user, uh, user group meetings. Do you know anything about that? Sure. It's something one of my colleagues built, um, and I think he's going to expand it out. But the general mm -hmm. idea is you can see how people, um, you know, they belong to a group, but they also belong to many other groups. So they're related right. through that. Um, there are also interests that these groups are about, right? mm -hmm. whether they're about big data, they're about NoSQL, whether they're about Java, whatever they're, they're about. Um, you can connect groups that way and you can connect people that way. Um, and you can expand it further out. Like if you wanted to see what other groups in other cities I may want to go visit based on my current, um, um, my current likes, something else you can mm -hmm. do. Um, connect products to people through it as well, same thing. I mean, you have, the trick to the graph really is if you have two points that you want to connect together, through some common language, whether it's you know same media groups, uh, same company, same product, same mm -hmm. whatever it is, you can do it through the relationships in the graph and just coming through and finding paths from one point to the other. Okay, and is this up on GitHub or is this a, a website? Do you know? It's both. It's on. It's a website. I don't have the URL in my head, but it's it's you can usually just find uh, New Day and uh, Meetup, and you'll you'll find it. Um, everything we do is open source, right. so it should be up there somewhere. So you have a, a repo on. I mean, a, an organization on GitHub. Neo4j. Yeah, there's a Neo4j, uh, there's a Neo Contrib, there's Neo Community, there's, there's, we have like a whole bunch. Everything is on GitHub. Um, you can yeah. see the guy's latest commits on, on, on Neo4j dot slash Neo4j. You can actually see what the, the team worked on yesterday night. Um, it's kind of nice, right? You can see exactly what we're doing <laughs> every single day. And, uh, you know, the bug fixes that come in, uh, the pull requests that come in, it's all right there. Okay, well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. No worries. Thanks. User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way! Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.